to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early childhood education. I'm Danielle, and today I want to talk to you about process art, and more specifically, um, painting. Someone had requested this or had a question on one of my other videos, and so I'm going to share with you my ideas for the process of painting. So let's get started. So what I want to share with you, I'm going to talk about, I made a list here of what children can paint with. So the tools that they're going to be, could use, um, what they paint on, and also the different types of paint. So I've got my list here and I'm just going to read through some of it and just do a little bit of explaining um, of why I chose those materials or where you can find those materials. But before I do that, the difference between process art and project art. So process art really is about the process. It's not about that final product and what that piece of art or craft looks like. It's really about the children being creative and being artistic in that process. And then product art is about the, the end product, that final product. It's a craft. So the materials are pri pri provided for them. There's really only one thing to do with them, whether it's like cut it out, glue it on. Here's a coloring sheet. Can you color it in? So there's really only one way. And that's not about the process. It's about that final product. It might look better on a bulletin board, that final craft. Uh, but think about what the children are learning doing that compared to a process, an art process. Okay, so the tip, different types of paints. This is what I came up with. Watercolors, make sure you're using the best for children, which of course is Crayola. Those dollar store um, or cheap ones, they are just really washed out, not bright colors. So make sure you're using Crayola. You can use acrylic paints, especially on materials that you don't want those, um, the paint to come off of. So, but make sure that children are wearing something over their clothes because acrylic paint will not come off. Just regular old temper paint. You can add salt to paint, you know, when you're sprinkling it on to make this um, sort of speckled look. There's finger paint, fabric paint is fun. And then you can also do shaving cream and glue, a little bit of shaving cream, a little bit of glue in paint. And then when that dries, it's actually kind of like a puffy paint. Something else I also really like, I forgot to mention about watercolors, you can also get liquid watercolors, which are a lot of fun. So the ones that are in already dried or the liquid. Things to paint with. Paint brushes, of course. I would highly recommend getting quality paint brushes. You know those ones you get um, like from the teacher store or even the dollar store uh, that has like that thick sort of bundle of bristles and they just get all munched up and they just don't, they're falling off on the artwork. They're terrible to paint with. If you as an adult artist don't feel like you would want to paint with those, don't make your children paint with them either because they just do not produce a really quality product. Lots of things you can find in your kitchen, um, spatulas, flippers, forks, potato mashers, um, lids to different things um sponges like kitchen sponges that you can leave in that rectangle shape or you can cut them up into different shapes you can use a salad spinner has anybody used a salad spinner before so what i do is i cut a, a piece of paper so it fits into the salad spinner uh, like a, a round circle shape and then children can take those papers they put it in the bottom of the salad spinner they take those ketchup squeeze bottles that are from the dollar store that I put um, temper paint into them and they just squeeze away on that circle piece of paper. Then they put the top on and I have one of those salad spinners that you pushed on and to make it spin and um, and then they get to open it up and see what it looks like. So if they want to add more paint they can or if they feel like they're done. Um, yeah, so a salad spinner is a lot of fun. There are lots of foods you can paint with. If you cut fruits and vegetables open they make really great prints. So apples, oranges, um, peppers, mm, celery, keep thinking and telling me all the other vegetables and fruits. So thinking about that using food to do some um, painting. Okay, then I'll read through the list of a couple of the other things. Um, brayers or rollers are fun to paint with. 
Um, of course, fingers and, and feet. You could use straws for blowing paint. Uh, just make sure you give everybody their own straw. Um, a sprayer, so putting water down um, paint in a sprayer, like a spray bottle and letting them spray. Uh, that's fun to take outside to um, paint on the snow. Um, pipettes, so they're squeezing and dropping it um, on their whatever they're painting on. You could use uh, toys like cars and animals where the animals could walk through the paint. The cars could be rolling. Duplos and Legos make really cool um, prints. You can think about things you find in nature, feathers, branches, pine cones, rocks. Um, that's all I can think of. You could use cotton balls, Q-tips, yarn. You could use yarn and like dip it in a, a plate plate with paint on it and then just kind of move it around on the paint, paper or you could dip it in the paint and put it inside a piece of folded paper and while you're pushing on the paper you pull it out and it makes kind of this really pretty kind of feathered snake kind of pattern. You can do some marble rolling or a different kind of ball rolling. You could, oh cardboard, taking a piece of um, sort of stiffer cardboard and cutting it into shapes they can um, squirt paper on and then just scrape it to see what they get. Letting them go wild with the spray, the squeeze bottle. So having them, allowing them to squeeze on the paper or whatever they're painting on, uh, they could leave it as is, or then they could paint it with a brush or one of the other materials. One thing that I have never done before is a pendulum and I've always wanted to do it and just never did. So putting a paint in some kind of container could be a, a cup, uh, I'm trying to think what else it could be. Something that could have a, a hole in it. So when you put the paint in and they swing it, then the paint is dripping on whatever their surface is and making a really cool pattern. They can even push it so it goes in a circle or a shape like that, and then it'll just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's something I've never done, but really would have liked to have done. Okay, so those are things you can paint with. I'm sure you have some other ideas. And if you do, don't forget to comment um, in the comments down below what other things you have used to paint with. So now what can the children paint on? I'm just gonna read through my list here. They can paint on rocks, fabric, cardboard, tissue paper. They can even look at Eric Carle's illustrations and sort of look at how that process was done and see if they can um, come up with their own pieces of art with that process. They can paint on tin foil, bubble wrap. Bubble wrap too, if you paint on it, you can take a print from it. Um, leaves and pumpkins and branches, so things from nature. Popsicle sticks, wood, paper plates, um, coffee filters, newspaper. They could also do um, color with crayons and then paint on top of it. And so they can see that sort of, um, what is it called? Painting resisting, paint resist, I think that's what it is. They could also put down tape on a piece of paper, paint over top of it and then pull it off. Just make sure it's that paint that isn't super sticky, maybe um, a painter's tape so that when they pull it off, they're not ripping their, their surface that they're painting on. And then they could paint, paint on glass. And then the last thing is canvas. So if you can, this is one of the things I love to do at the beginning of the year is have a big canvas that we call it our family our classroom family canvas. And so everybody gets to add their their touch, their artistic touch to it. And we hang it up and I put, you know, quotes from the students as they've been painting together, photos of them. So we have this canvas that stays in our classroom all year long. I think that is all I have. I think I shared everything that I have on my list. If you have any other ideas, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I know that I'm not thinking of everything and maybe you can think of something, so share it. I do have some other ideas um, of the process art and videos that I can do, so I will work on those. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a happy day.